from NDTV Studios on the second floor of the Duncan Student Center. A Notre Dame Student Media and Notre Dame Television production. This is ND Sunrise. Good morning and welcome back to ND Sunrise. I'm Elena Morgan. And I'm Helen Wynn. Elena, have you been outside this past week? I know I've been enjoying the sun and sunrise lately. Yes, and the weather has been absolutely amazing, but also so much has been happening on campus lately, from Junior Parents Weekend to Engineers Week, and now we have the Keenan Review coming up. With all of those exciting events, you know we have a great episode lined up for you today. First up, we know Valentine's Day was last week, but some of our friends from Shamrock Sports filmed a fun video where they interviewed some people and asked them which athlete they would want to be their Valentine. Let's check it out. Happy Valentine's Day to all of our millions of viewers at home. We hope you enjoyed it. We spent our Valentine's Day with our dates at Yastrzemski's, the basement, Yaz's, and we asked everyone if you could choose one athlete to be your Valentine, who would it be? Anything to add, Eric? <laughs> That's it. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs> renowned host here today, Ryan Nam. Uh, Sean Mullery, head waiter, Yastrzemski's. I'm here with my two very special dates. This is David Reinhardt. No, sure. This is Colin. <laughs> they both have girlfriends. I, I do not, but they accompany me today. I'm here with Joe. And I'm here with my third date, the pride of Albuquerque, New Mexico, Nick Morales. Uh, hi, everything. Happy Valentine's Day to you. I hope you had a great Valentine's Day. How has your Valentine's Day been today? Okay, well, it's been wonderful. Um, I haven't oh done much. God. Okay, it's <laughs> but that's. <laughs> oh, if you could have the Valentine of any professional athlete, who would it be? Or, yeah, college athlete, professional athlete, any athlete, who would it be? Mm. That's a hard question. Okay, okay. Um, hmm. Do they have to be alive? Testing, testing, testing. Um, I'm not really sure. You already know, Alan. You have someone on your mind, you just don't want to say it. Take your pick. Jimmy Garoppolo. De'Aaron Fox. I have to go with Joel Embiid, I think. Oh, I think. oh. Probably Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow? Yeah. We're going to go with Molly Seidel. Molly Sorry. Seidel, she went here. She went to Notre Dame. She was a <gasps> track and cross-country athlete. Oh, there you go. That's Ryan Nam, folks. Yeah. <clears throat> Come on. I'd have to say Livy Don. You know, this might be a little bit of a hot take. Oh, Why is that? Because he's the GOAT. Pagebackers. But I'm from the Dallas area. I love my okay. Cowboys. Jason Tatum. He's cool. So I think it would be cool to have a Valentine with Dak Prescott. You Dak know, Prescott. Me and the big homie. We go to the big homie. We go. <laughs> She's just got such a great personality. And obviously, you know, it's just a dream for me. Oh, no. He could just caress me in his arms so, so gently. <laughs> oh. Yeah, bro, if you can't share Valentine's with the homies, then what's it for? He's the most sexy man in the NFL. He is pretty handsome. I agree with you on that. I love basketball, and she's awesome at basketball. It's an honest take. It's an honest take. Done. Thanks, guys. If you're interested in hearing more sports-related news, check out Shamrock Sports, another group here at NDTV. All of their videos are posted on Fridays at 3.30 p.m. on the Notre Dame Television YouTube channel. Elena, what are you doing for spring break? Well, I'm actually going on a trip to Dublin through Notre Dame's Women in Engineering group. But what about you? I'm going on a trip to Mexico with my Economics of Immigration class, and we'll be volunteering at the Red Cross Migrant Shelter and Catholic Shelters there. That's so cool. It is so exciting to hear about everyone's spring break plans. Just wait until you hear about a group of first years in P-Dub who got scammed by an airline over tickets to Fort Lauderdale for spring break. Handing it off to Zora. What's up, NDTV? I'm Zora Rogers here to do some investigative reporting on the latest scandal to hit Notre Dame's campus, Kiwi Gate. 
With spring break rapidly approaching, ND students are gearing up to make their great migration to Fort Lauderdale. But for some, it's been a little more financially taxing than others. I'm here to interview a couple P-Dub girls who were recently scammed by a fraudulent airline <laughs> by a fraudulent airline company called Kiwi Airlines. <laughs> here with Quinn Sanderson and Quinn what happened well Kiwi Gate oh well, I don't know the exact day but you know it'd been months of us trying to plan spring break and we finally decided we gotta get flights and but you know we were looking for a deal and I found a deal and it was very cheap it was so we kind of just jumped on it we ordered it and then one person was about to buy their ticket and they looked up reviews for the site and there was one star and over 60,000 negative reviews of how they were scammed. And that's when we knew. <laughs> maybe we, we could have, we maybe messed up. Yeah. So how, how much were the flights? I think it came out to around $180 for two connecting flights to and from Fort Lauderdale. I know that was our first mistake. Um, and there will be one overnight layover in Philly. Luckily, I'm from Philly, so that works out nicely. And why not fly Spirit? So the funny thing is, now I am, kind of. We did, we got them through Kiwi.com, who actually is an internationally based company that buys the tickets all separately and then sends them to you, but they kind of hack your account a little bit so you can't really change your flight information and you have to pay extra in order to get customer service. Extra we did not pay, so we didn't get any customer service. So now three out of the four flights are Frontier except one of them had a little change, which would have put us, you know, like a day behind. So we had to cancel that flight and we have one spirit flight mixed into the four. So separate. some of you are still buy still flying Kiwi. Yes, yes. Two of us are still committing to Kiwi <laughs> and we, we will be, uh, you can follow up with us on how successful okay. that is, but um, I'm still flying Kiwi. Yes. Okay, I do have a quick question. <laughs> so I did a little bit of research on this company before, <laughs> <laughs> did this segment actually and I when I googled it it said that it filed for bankruptcy in 1999 and, and ceased, this is news to me and it ceased operations also in 1999 so, so <laughs> oh no so um oh, no. what do you how do you respond to that wow um I mean Frontier gave us flight numbers so that we seem to have flights which is extra confusing now that i know they went bankrupt and ceased operations um i really have no explanation for that one but i am still flying kiwi so we'll see if they pull it off okay yeah so quinn tell me how'd you find kiwi like did you google the company or search like cheap flights and or what yeah i searched cheap flights and then from there kiwi found me it was on top of american airlines it was really just squished in there with the big names who was i to know that you know all the lore behind kiwi um i had no idea really and yeah i probably could have done a google search on kiwi and found all of that information but i didn't and how'd your parents react? Oh, so that night we had, there's a variety of reactions. Some people immediately called the parent. Some people were canceling the credit card. I used my debit card. Mm. Mm. So a few errors were made here. Um, so I was in the position where I could not just, you know, cancel the, or question the, the statement. So I was kind of like, ooh. And while everyone was calling their parents, I was like, I don't think I can survive that. Mm. The, you know. They'll be making fun of me a lot, definitely. I think when I go home for the holidays, it'll be brought up okay. for a while. Um, but they were more so just questioning my decisions. So so they and, do or uh, don't know? They know. They know and they think I'm a little stupid. Mm. Yeah. Which is and, and they're on board with you with you flying still? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're kind of like, it's your money. Best of luck. Mm. Yeah. So we'll see. So did you end up getting your money back? I don't think so. For that one flight that I switched to Spirit, I don't think I did end up getting the money back. But I'll need to really double check, but I really don't think I did. Nothing in the bank statements? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But honestly, if I make it, if I make it in the end, I did it for under 200. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Keep yeah. us updated. And okay. I, you, I remember you telling me actually off camera that Kiwi has a slogan. 
I do. What is that slogan? See, this is this should have been a red flag, perhaps. The slogan is, we hack the system. <laughs> <laughs> Convincing, I know. Nice. It really builds their credibility, I think. Yeah. So if you could do this again, would you, what would you do differently? Well, I think if I make it to Florida, I would, there's nothing I would change, really. Um, if I don't make it to Florida, I'll be pretty upset. But even then, we've got some serious laughs out of it. Uh, it's really was stuck with us for a full week, I want to say, um, since now it's died down a bit. But, you, you know, you got to live and learn. In the future, maybe I'll start Googling brands before I purchase over $100 things on them. Um, but it happens to the best of us. Yeah, it does, indeed. Thank you so much. Of course, thank you for having me. All right, that's all we have for you today. Please just fly, spirit. Don't get scammed. As always, I'm Zora Rogers signing off for this week. And as always, go Irish. Thanks, Zora. Now it's time to get out your agendas because there are so many fun events coming up soon. First up, the Harper Cancer Research Institute will be having their annual chili cook-off on Monday, March 6th from 4 to 6 p.m. in Harper Hall. The student rate for unlimited tastings is $5 and all proceeds benefit cancer research. Be sure to go check it out. Kick off Lent with Exalt Eucharistic Adoration tomorrow night in the Keough Hall Chapel from 7.30 to 9 p.m. A reflection, praise and worship, confession and prayer teams will be available. Stay after for a hot chocolate social. Acoustic Cafe will be tonight from 8.30 to 10.30 p.m. This event takes place every Thursday in Haggerty Cafe, and it features some of Notre Dame's best live music performers. You can either sign up to perform or just watch and enjoy the show. It's not too late to register for the Women's Investing Summit, which starts tonight at 4 p.m. with the student stock pitch competition and opening panel in the Jordan Auditorium of Mendoza. Tomorrow will feature a keynote speech from Olympic medalist Lindsey Vaughn in Corbett Family Hall at 8 a.m. Don't miss out. Finally, in case you somehow haven't heard, the first show for the Keenan Review is starting tonight. There are three shows in total over the weekend, and I think it's safe to say that it's one of the most iconic dorm events on campus. What do you think, Helen? I totally agree with you. In fact, I interviewed them at the ticket distribution. Let's see what they had to say about this year's review. I'm here with Nick Slusher, the producer of the review. Nick, thanks for talking with us. What can you tell us about the review? So this is the Keener Review's 47th year, and we've been here a long time on campus. That means that we really know what the campus culture is like and how to get involved. Additionally, we are the biggest student event on campus, and the review is a perfect way to get all 240 members of Keenan Hall involved, just whether or not you're an introvert, an extrovert, you like music, you like comedy, or you want to stay back to the side and run the stage. There's something for everyone. On top of that, we're always looking to give out to the community, and the Keenan Review is a charity event for a halfway house called Christmas House. Additionally, the review is just like a huge part of campus culture. The jokes, the music, everything about it is just kind of like memorized across all campus. For example, last year we had what was called Milk Skit, which is where we just had four sophomores stand up there and then chuck milk. And that was one of the most memorable skits apparently for everyone. Small things like that that really give people those memories that they look back on saying, this is why I love going to their name. And for Keenan Nice to say, this is why I love it. Basically just the funniest ones, feels like an easy answer. We also like, we measure for appropriateness, we meet with a bunch of student groups, like, is this a venue, is this a over a line? And I think, probably try to measure, like, people's expectations. Like, if a skit has a lot of really good dorm humor, we try to emphasize that, like, if you have any administration, I'm not huge on <laughs> So we try to get what people are coming for, but mainly the funniest stuff that's out. Bobby, it's your second year as rector here. How did you feel coming to this community and seeing everybody work together on a project like the Keenan Review? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's interesting. When I started last year, I had no idea what the Keenan Review was. Um, but starting pretty much in August, September, right at the start of the school year, um, the review really gets underway. Uh, 
we pick a team, we start planning the theme, uh, and the community really like pulls itself together in really wonderful and unique ways. Um, and so it's just kind of beautiful to see this this major project that 6,000 Notre Dame students are going to come to um, that's put on just purely by one community. And seeing that opportunity and seeing the guys really come together and support one another and affirm one another, um, it's really humbling to see that how much work goes into this and how much care that they have for not just Keenan, but for Notre Dame as a whole. Um, we talked to Nick, the producer of the review. He talked a little bit about the Dismas House. Could you talk more about that and if they get to see the review at all? Yeah, Dismas House is a really awesome local or organization um, that helps support uh, formerly incarcerated members of society that uh, Keenan has supported weekly by uh, making dinners for the last 30 plus years. And so on the first night of the review, we always invite them to there. I think they're going to bring like 30 people um, this year, which would be wonderful. And they'll speak about their experience and what it really means. And so we hope to donate a lot of money, so please support uh, the Disney South. Thank you so much, Bobby. Thanks so much. Thank you. Scantily. Clad. Men. Thanks, Helen. If you were able to get tickets, you should definitely check it out. I got tickets for tomorrow night, and I'm so excited to see it. I'm preparing myself for a fun and emotional final show on Saturday night. Well, that's all we have for today's episode of ND Sunrise. Catch our episodes on Tuesday and Thursday mornings in the Duncan Student Center from 9 to 11 a.m. You can also watch our episodes on the ND TV YouTube page under the ND Sunrise playlist. To keep up on all of the latest news, follow us at Notre Dame Television on Instagram, Notre Dame Television on YouTube, at Notre Dame TV on Twitter, and at Notre Dame Television on TikTok. Do you want to get involved with ND TV? We're searching for people interested in studio production and television broadcast. NDTV is student-led program here on campus. Come visit our studio on the second floor of Duncan Student Center or fill out the interest form using the QR code on your screen. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode. From all of us here at the studio, we hope you have an amazing rest of your day. This is ND Sunrise signing off.